Now we're not actually on air until it says go. Until we say go on air. Show you. I click it. Not yet. And then will there be a button that says go off air? As soon as I click it. Now when do you go off air? Never. Okay. As long as that's on air, the camera's feeding in, everything's going. Okay. Uh, if we at like halftime, if we just want to be silent, we just turn the mics off. What's up? Come on, Indians! So here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll wait until the national anthem is over. Then we'll hit go on air. Okay. We'll do starters right away, because that's what they'll be doing in the background. Okay. And then we'll do a little pregame at the same time. So we'll get we'll do the pregame and the starters all at once. Okay. This is going through. So this is Harvard. So we'll just wait until Rock around. How much are we getting paid for this? This better be 150 then. Well, even if it's no. 75. I was going to come be here anyways, but the problem was Patty was going to come with me, and now she's not. I kind of feel bad. She, I bet you she still slows up for your guys' game. What's that? Got <laughs> I did. I told her. I said, hey, get that on. Hey, is your mic working? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, she'll probably watch. It'll be funny. Hey, you, you ever seen uh, First Blood uh, Rambo Part 2? No, oh, <laughs> Murdoch, I'm coming for you. <laughs> right after he got uh, electrocuted. Yeah. He does. He grabs the mic real tight like that. If they don't, if they don't do the national anthem, then we'll go right into uh, okay. starters. starters. If not, then don't hit go on air until we see that. So. I don't know if we're doing National Anthem or not. Hey, everything that we're saying right now is being recorded, though, to the servers. So, like, when I go back through and, like, edit oh, you the have game, to start it. I start it when you hit go on air. Okay. So. Hey, I'm not so sure. If, not sure what we're doing. Well, we'll see here. Steve will... Are we doing lineups? I'm not exactly sure. Good evening and welcome to Homer Belvedere Gymnasium. Yeah, they're doing two. And the home team right away. First, the building Harvard Hornets. Number 32, Eddie Lindhart. Are we not doing national anthem? Okay. Number 12. All right, we ready to go on air? Going on air. One, two, three. Welcome, everybody. Again, uh, we're back here at Homer Bill Berry Gymnasium where we're having IHSA TV once again here. Basketball season, our first basketball game of the year. Uh, tonight's ball game is the Castle Challenge ball game, the basketball version of it, football in the fall, and then continue on with the basketball season. We're getting starting lineups on the way right here. Uh, for the Indians tonight, starting at guard is going to be number two, Lindsay Husky. She's a junior. At forward, Jess Villy. She's a senior, number three. At guard, Sabrina Marsh, a senior, number 13. Number 20, at guard, Taylor Carlson. She's a junior. 
And at forward, number 22, Bailey Vatava. She's also a junior. For the Hornets tonight, number three, a guard, Jessica Hernandez. She's a senior. A sophomore, number five, at guard, Kaylee Bischke. Bisch, excuse me. Uh, at uh, forward, a senior, uh, 5'9", senior, number 12, Randy Blazer. And at forward, uh, 5'8", junior, number 23, Sam McLeod. And at forward, a 5'11", junior, number 32, Abby Linhart. The Indians come into the game at 7 at 15, 4 and 3 in the conference. Uh, their last game was against Rockford, Rockford Christian. That was a loss at Rockford Christian, 48-37. Uh, coached by Nick Rohde, uh, he is 28 and 23 here in his second year as the Marengo girls coach. Leading scores for the Indians, Villy at 15.6 points per game. And Husky is on the leaderboards in the area with 19 three-pointers. We'll have the tip for you, and we'll tell you a little bit about Harvard here in a minute. Looks like Peyton Velasquez jump, jumping for the Indians, and the tip goes to the Hornets. Hernandez brings it up, hits McLeod on the wing. McLeod to the top of the key. Shots up, no good. Rebound Harvard back in. That rebound was McLeod. She came off the wing, got the board, put it back in, and a quick 2-0 for the Hornets. Marsh brings the ball up. Both teams coming out in man-to-man -man defense. Ball got loose there. Back to Carlson on the wing. She gets the shot blocked by Linhart, and Harvard recovers and is going to bring it up. Not the start the Indians were looking for. Billy with the steal nice out top, and she's going to have a breakaway. See if she can finish. She misses the layup. Rebound Harvard. Billy had it. She kind of held up for a second. Harvard was able to recover, and she uh, was contested on the shot and unable to put it down. Hernandez guarded closely by Marsh to the wing. Husky with a hand on it. Loose ball recovered by the Indians. Billy with the recovery. Marsh will bring it up, looking up the floor. She finds Taylor Carlson back out to Marsh. Marsh from the top of the key, and it drops. That was just inside the top of the key, two-pointer, 2-2. Two -two. Indians with a little man press here, putting a little pressure on them. That's Bishk up the floor, over to the right wing. Rebound Harvard, and out of bounds. That went off. Of Blazer, out of bounds, and Moringa will take over. Harvard's uh, definitely taking some opportunities shooting her here early from the three-point line. They, uh, right away, trying to get some buckets up quick. Last contest between these two. I think Moringa doubled them up at Harvard. Right baseline, Husky. Skip pass over to Marsh. Marsh dribbles middle. Comes back to the left hand. Layup missed. Rebound, Harvard. Strong rebound by McLeod. Out to Hernandez, she'll bring it up the floor. McLeod on the right wing, dribbles. Guarded closely by Velasquez, knocked out by the Indians. Harvard will have the ball underneath. Both teams with uh, a struggling year so far, not a whole lot of wins uh, on the record. Both have losing records. Looking for an opportunity to get a win tonight. Rebound put back for Harvard, 4-2. Back out to Villy out front, and the Indians are going to reset. Velasquez on the right wing across to Husky. Husky, the leading three-point shooter for the Indians. Back to Marsh, and then the Indians will reset. Carlson on the right wing. Baseline to Velasquez. Well, that's not Velasquez. Excuse me. That's Bailey Vitava. Looks like the ball went out on the Indians in Harvard. Yeah, nice full court pressure here by the Indians. Sabrina putting pressure. Left wing, Harvard looking to enter it into the post, nothing there. Gonna rotate it around, back over to the top of the key. The Bish and Hernandez unable to get the ball down in time, moved her pivot foot. Traveling turnover, Indian ball. Indian 
Indians really unable to get to their, their force inside here. Veli on the leaderboards in the area and points scored. Averages around 15 points a game. That shot no good. Harvard takes over. Uh, Nate, right now, uh, the Harvard is just out rebounding Ringo right now. That's and the biggest difference in this game. Not a whole lot of offensive boards for the Indians. Billy knocks it out of bounds. Good hustle there. Harvard retains possession. Five second call. Oh. Good not defense. able to get it in. Good defense by the Indians. Not able to get it in. Harvard comes into the ball game. 4-17 and 17 record, 1-6 and six in the conference. Their last uh, conference loss was, listen to this one, Dwayne, at Burlington Central, they lost 54-19. to 19. Ooh. Their leading scores are Blazer with 8.7 points and Linhart with 8.5. Indians with the possession. Top of the key, nice little back screen to Villy. Villy's open underneath, unable to convert the layup. Villy gets her own rebound back up and is fouled. You know, talking about Burlington Central, I believe they're in first place in the conference. 6-0, and oh, I believe, in the yeah. conference already. She wasn't shooting? Apparently she wasn't shooting. They're going to take the ball out of bounds, call it on the rebound, I guess. Billy back at the top of the key, looking for the shot. Now driving, kicks it to the corner to Vitava. Vitava up for a three, and it's short. Rebound again by Billy. That's got to be her fourth or fifth board, and that one's got to be on the shot there. Yep, they're going to give her two shots. Billy with a nice, strong take to the hole, and she'll be shooting two. Nice little thing we got going here tonight, Dwayne, with the girls basketball wrestling afterwards and varsity boys after that. Kind of gives everybody a chance to showcase and hopefully builds a pretty good uh, crowd by the time the varsity boys roll around. Yeah, it's kind of interesting starting the girls game at 4.30 in the afternoon. People are still getting off work. But it's a great night. Uh, good to watch all three varsity programs. Really looking forward to wrestling. Yeah, it'll be nice to see uh, two squads go at it. Heated battle a couple years ago over at Harvard. Oh, yeah. Came down to the very last match. Villy hits both free throws and the, puts the pressure on immediately right back. And Villy, with a nice little play there, she tipped the pass right back into uh, Bish, Bishke's hand, uh, hands and it went out of bounds. Marsh at the top of the key. Indians will set up. Little ball screen. And find Villy underneath. She was wide open, unable to convert the layup. Right back to Carlson. Unable to drop it there. Couple nice shots for the Indians so far. Christy Williams entered the game for the Indians. There we go, there's a layup going down for the Indians. That's Billy, nice little pass from Marsh up the floor. Looks like Marsh might have passed up a layup for another layup, but either way, we got the two points there. Yeah, the Pressure Indians definitely have turned work. up the defense here. Pressure is starting to work, too. They call the travel there. Travel again on Hernandez. She got to the middle of the lane, but took too many steps before she put it up. Indians up 6-4 here after starting down 4-2. Checking in the game for Harvard is number 23, Sam McLeod, and in for the Indians, number 14, Logan Brettschneider. Rebound to Harvard. Nice little drive to the baseline, but a lot of traffic there. Put it up in traffic. Harvard gets a board and bring it back up. Hernandez trying to set up the offense for the Hornets. A lot of pressure by Marsh. Good defense. Stick with it. Right wing. That shot up. Knocked out of bounds, I believe, by Harvard. That shot was by number five, the guard, Kaylee Bisch. Marengo takes over. Marsh brings the ball up the floor, walking it up. Oh. I think it's just a matter of time before the Indians get a whole lot of those. Nice little pass there into Villy for another two points. Yeah, that looks like a nice, well-designed play right there. Very well executed. A little pick and roll there with a backside flash. Nice looking play. Drive underneath and a foul. Going to be two shots. 
That foul, I believe, was on Brett Schneider. And going to the line for Harvard to shoot two will be Randy Blazer. Would that be Chase Blazer's sister? I think maybe Cousins, but I could be wrong. Chase Blazer was a post for the Hornets a few years back. Standout football player. Yeah. Wide receiver. And one down there for the Hornets, 8-5. Indians looking to get this to 10-5 and stretch this to their biggest lead of the game. A little handoff there. Billy goes up and she's knocked down. Harvard turned the ball over there. Looks like we're gonna have a foul. Marsh with the steal. Took it right back. Uh, uh, excuse me if I pronounce this incorrectly, but Javon, Javonica Jacobs uh, with the steal there, kind of the rebound off of the uh, miscue by Billy. Goes up the floor, Marsh steals it right back and then foul. And then Indians able to get possession back. Boy, if Indians could convert on these layups, this ball game would be a, a, in a lot worse shape than it is. Harvard able to stick around because Marengo's not able to finish some of these close ones. Number 10, Rachel Tal just in the game for the Indians. Shot by Marsh is no good. Rebound, Villy. Villy up, no good. And Harvard with the board. That's number 15, McKenna Powell. Sophomore for Harvard on the rebound. New point guard for the Hornets is number five, Bish. Bish. And the drive, no good. Out of bounds, oh no, foul. Who's going to the line? Man, Jesse Villy is always around the ball, isn't she? She's, always, she's all over the boards all yeah. the time. So two free throws here, 8-5. First one up and good. In the game for the Indians, Taylor Carlson, and it looks like there'll be a sub for the shooter in for the Hornets, number 12, Randy Blazer. Billy to make it 10-5, and it's short. Rebound, Hornets. Bish to bring the ball up the floor. Looking for a back door, not there. A little screen off the, roll off the screen there. That was a nice little play there. McLeod set a screen on the high elbow. And Blazer came off there, but uh, fouled and they'll have the ball out of bounds. A little stack set here. Out to Linhart. Linhart inside. Rebound. Harvard back in. McLeod with the rebound put back. And that makes it 9 7 here with about 35 seconds to go in the quarter. Little give and go right back to Carlson inside bucket. 11 7, 20 seconds here. And Bishk will bring the ball up the floor. To the right wing, Brett Schneider. And we're gonna have a foul, 13 seconds left here. Be the third foul on the Indians, so the ball will go out of bounds. It's like Harvard, a little box set here. Indians look to be going man here with one in the middle to help out. Yep, it's man, shot in the corner, no good. Rebound Harvard put back. No good, rebound another Harvard put back, and that one's good, five seconds, four seconds, three, they're gonna have to launch it up. Up and no good off the backboard. Good look there, but nothing going. So 11-9 here, it's all kind of a story of offensive boards here, Dwayne. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I, I think both, both ends, I think both teams are dominating at their end for offensive boards. Each team with a couple chances for some putbacks and Pretty much just kind of trading buckets here. 11 9, second quarter, getting ready to start here. Indians uh, coming off of a pretty good season last year, 21 and 8. 
they're, uh, I believe they lost in the regional championship they did. last year. 21 and 8, and a lot of seniors on that team, a lot of senior leaders on that team. And so besides Villy, uh, the Indians are looking to kind of try to find their identity here over the next few years. Pretty young team, a lot of uh, uh, underclassmen uh, with opportunities to play. So hopefully trying to build here for the future. Yeah, and I know that I think the freshmen has had a lot of success this year. So, you know, the future does look bright. Uh, continue our success here. Well, Harvard will take over on possession arrow here in the second half. Into Bishk. Bishk looking for the post up. She gets it. Rebound. Carlson, and it'll be a jump ball. Nice little give and go. Bishk right back to uh, Blazer. Blazer unable to connect. Jump ball. Possession arrow goes right back to Marengo. Timeout. Looks like we got a timeout, 30 second timeout. And I believe that's the Hornets. So, quick timeout here in the second quarter. Coach might not have liked something he saw there. That seems like an odd time with nine seconds going into the quarter to all of a sudden take a timeout. Yeah, maybe maybe he just wants to make sure that, you know, there's only a two point difference here. He wants to make sure his team starts the second quarter on a good note and try to tie this game up possibly. Carlson to take the ball out of bounds for the Indians into Marsh and Marsh will walk it up. Hernandez back in for the Hornets. She'll pick up Marsh at half court. Marsh looking for the pass to the wing, but back door, I believe she was looking for Peyton Velasquez, but she went back door there. Miscommunication and Harvard takes over with a chance to tie up the ball game. Indians with a full court press here, all man. Yeah, I love the man-to-man -man full court and press. And Hernandez travels again. That's the third time that she's been called for too many steps. Marsh to take the ball out of bounds. Husky back to Marsh, and the Indians are going to just set it up. Got a feeling they're going to be looking for a play either to find Husky for a three-point shot. Yep, here comes Billy. Underneath, they were looking for that same one they got the layup on earlier. They do look inside well. They know where Billy's at. They find her almost every play, and there it is, Husky for three, long. It was a contested three and goes out of bounds. Again, great effort by Billy trying to get the rebound. You know, a lot of her points, you know, she scores 15, 16 points a game. A lot of them are on rebound putbacks because she's just always trying to find a, a spot in there to grab those rebounds. Marsh with a little reach there. I thought that she could have got called for a foul, but knocks it out of bounds. Harvard retains possession. Looking to get it in. Nothing going there. Marsh had her head turned, playing good defense there, or else she would have been able to grab that ball. Hernandez struggling to hold on to the ball. Steal there by Husky. The Indians will bring it up. Harvard really not able, as long as the Indians have the pressure on them, they're not able to get any offense going. Underneath to a wide open. She was wide open. Randy Blazer underneath was just, she was screaming. Hands up, flailing, and they finally found her after they picked up the loose ball. She's fouled. That foul was on number 15, Nikki Hammertree. That's her first, team fourth. And... The first free throw is no good. So the Harvard's not Harvard uh, not going to be able to tie it up on this possession, but they are hanging close. That's the last thing you really want to do is give, give a team a, a hope, especially when you uh, beat them pretty good at their place, and now you're giving them a hope to stay in this ballgame. Misses both free throws. Rebound, Villy. Boy, she's got to have eight or nine rebounds already. Ill-advised pass there up the sideline. Hernandez steals it, and she's going to go up the floor. Boy, oh. she looked like she was carrying it all the way up, too. Slips and falls, and then there she is again. Blazer wide open under the back basket again. Rebound, Villy. 
all over it. And she dives. There's kind of a struggle for the ball there. She dives out of bounds. And uh, ball landed out of bounds will be Harvard basketball. Boy, that's got to be 10 boards for Billy. Yeah, I think she's on her way for a right double-double in, tonight. Yeah, right inside again, wide open, was number 12 Randy Blazer with a layup, and it's tie ball game. 6.16 to go in Harvard. After getting beat pretty good at their place is sticking with the Indians here in Homer Berry Gymnasium. Foul there, and it's going to be Harvard ball. Yeah, another foul on the Indians. We're reaching the... The foul total's going up, you know. Once they, well, we're at five now. Last thing we want to do is keep putting them on the line. Pass up the floor to Bishk. Bishk guarded by Brett Schneider. Able to do a little up and under, nothing going. Rebound. I believe that rebound was Blazer. Unable to put it back. Rebound Bisk, and she throws up kind of a prayer there in the middle of getting foul that goes down. That's two points, it's 13-11, foul was called, so they count the bucket, and Bish, Bish with a chance to make it a 14-11 game. Coach Rohde is looking a little upset over there on the sideline. And rebound. Uh, that's off us. All of a sudden, the rebounding struggles are on the Indian side, that was Blazer again with a strong board and knocks it off of Vitava's leg. And Blazer was wide open under the hole again, not able to convert up the floor to Villy. Indians and not able to knock it down and the Indians are gonna bring it out and set it up. Probably a good idea here. Billy inside and she carried it. She had a nice little move there. If she doesn't carry the ball, she's probably got a wide open shot. Five thirty-six here to go in the second quarter. Looks like a little zone press. Yeah, a little little zone. And Coach Rody mixing up the defenses there. That's number thirty-two. Abby Linhart from the corner three is good. Sixteen eleven. Here with five seventeen to go in the second quarter. Big run here for the Hornets. Yeah, whatever their coach said at halftime, it worked. Or I mean, at uh, at that timeout, it worked. And that's what the Indians need to get a bucket right there. A little pass underneath to Villy. Villy knocks down the five-footer, and the Indians keep the pressure on. Turnover, Marsh looking to score. She goes up, foul, not able to put it down, but she's going to go to the line to try to close in the gap here a little bit. Indians need a, a big run here. Use this press to put up about 10, 12 points. You know, Harvard shot several three-pointers, and they finally got one to go there. It always seems, you know, free throw is good by Marsh. It always seems that a team never gets a three-pointer to go down until all of a sudden they really need it or when you really don't want them to hit it is really the, the truth there. All of a sudden they get, they get a lead and they throw up a three and you're thinking, well, they haven't made one all game, and then that one goes down. 16-14, Marsh switches the second one. 16-15, just under five minutes to go. Bish bringing the ball up the floor. Now, excuse me, that is... McKenna Powell bringing the ball up the floor. Over to Linhart on the right baseline. Back to Bish. The top of the key. Drives middle. Stolen by Carlson. Marsh going to drive. Wide open. Bank good. 17-16 Indians. So just as quick as they lost the lead, they got it right back again. Marsh playing some solid defense on the point guard. I believe he changed that call and gave it to the Indians. Mm. We'll take that. Absolutely. Marshall walk it up here. Both teams still in a man-to-man. -man. Indians showed signs of a zone here and there, but went right back to the man on that last possession. A little pick and roll, a little handoff. Marsh right up the middle, and she's going to get a little foul there. It's going to be on the floor, though, out of bounds for the Indians underneath. Marsh getting some penetration here. Getting into the middle of the floor. And 
she's got, I mean, Billy has, she's got a bucket, and Billy's got two buckets off of her penetrating people coming over to help, and then the dump down. Batava in the corner to Marsh up top, looking for a screen for Billy. Nice little play there. Carlson, I think if, after she set that screen, if she would have just flashed, she would have been wide open. There she is right in the middle. Oh, nice pass. little pass to Batava, blocked, I believe, by Linhart. Harvard's got a couple big uh, post players in there that are capable of blocking some shots. Oh, and that's going to be a travel. Linhart unable to hold on to that as she came around the wing there. And then she went to the middle, traveled. Yeah, they say on the roster, Abby Linhart is 5'11", which is, uh, I think, a that's little bit taller than any girl that we, absolutely. the Indians have. That's pretty tall. Nice little pick and roll. Vitava unable to finish. Billy with the rebound. Kind of went up, probably a jump ball, but lost it. Marsh picks it up. Husky goes in, misses, gets a block. Billy gets the rebound off the block, gets fouled. That was on Linhart. And Billy will go to the line. 324 to here to go in the first half. Both teams are now in the bonus. Free throw is good. Extends the lead for the Indians to two points. Right now is when you could probably see the Indians coming right back with that quick man-to-man -man press, trap and press. And the free throw no good. Still a two-point lead. And on the miss, the Indians are going to pull it back half-court D. That's Bishke on the right wing. Top of the key to Blazer. Blazer loses it. Linhart up the right side. Layup, no good. Ball's knocked out to Marsh. Marsh up the left side. Finds Husky. And she's up and no good. Foul, and she'll go to the line. 2.55 to go here in the third or in second quarter. The Indians have made some nice passes uh, inside. You know, we haven't really connected on all the, the, the baskets, but I'll tell you what, some nice bounce passes in there. And, and I think the key is they're, they're, the person with the ball is getting as deep as they can get before they make that pass, bring that defender over and wide open. So first free throw good, three-point ball game now. Husky on her second attempt, and good. She's got a good little shooting for him. It takes a little while for it to go up, but it's right there. She's got a good follow through and repeats the same motion every time. Bishke goes down, kind of incidental contact. Oh, there. boy. Little scrum, scrum there for the ball. And Marsh finds Villy. Villy gonna put it up, no good. Back up, no good. And rebound, Blazer. Blazer back to Bishke. Bishke up the left side here. Looking for Jacobs underneath, nothing going there. Bishke ball back, Hernandez top of the key. Marsh has been able to get the best of, oh, she stepped out of bounds. I think she stepped out of bounds right there and the official didn't call it. Yeah, I don't think he was Bishke expecting it. Bishke shot, no good, rebound Villy. Feels like her 20th rebound of the game. Up the floor to Husky. Husky looking inside, nothing. She's gonna put up the three. No good, but backside rebound. That backside rebound was that. Oh, oh. stolen back by Villy. Marsh to Villy. Villy rips it out of the hands of the defender. Nice. Puts it up good. 22-16 Indians. Back to a six point lead, their biggest of the night. It's Villy's 12th point of the night already. I bet she's got that many rebounds, if not more. Double-double in the first half, huh? Well, we're in a little, a little zone. Yeah, a little 2-3 zone by the Indians here. Packing it in, trying to force Hornets to shoot the ball. They came out firing it up, didn't knock any down, and then got one open from the corner. Well, now we matched uh, up, and now we're back yeah, in the main that's going to be a foul. That's a foul on number 23. Oh, well, that's Christy Williams. That'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's her third foul. Yeah, I just saw that. So Williams with three fouls. She got two fouls pretty quick there in the first quarter. Went out of the ball game. 
Comes back in, gets the third. You know, that's a coaching decision that I've always struggled with. Do you pull the guy out with two fouls or a girl out with two fouls? Do you put him back in? You know, but I just, conventional wisdom sometimes it just holds true that in the long haul, I'm sure that basketball's been played for 100 years and the conventional wisdom is they get two fouls, you don't want them to get their third. Yeah, nice nice little j- baseline jumper by Villy. Takes it 24-16, now under a minute to go here in the first half. Little pressure by the Indians. Up the floor, Bishke, and a three thrown up by Blazer. Rebound, Carlson, foul, and Carlson will go shoot one and one. Yeah, as a coach, uh, basketball coach, so what, you know, uh, you kind of like players to get some fouls because you like the aggressive play, but yet, yet when they hit the three, four range. You know, yeah, well, you get you get to a point where it's like. You get two fouls in the first quarter where you're like, well, we got to use this player in the second quarter. But then you think to yourself, well, if they get a third foul, then now I've only got two in the second half to give up. So I just, my thing is, is coaches have been saying you take a, guy, uh, a player out with two fouls in the first half and you leave them out. And I got to think that thousands of coaches over 100 years at every single level who follow that rule I mean, there's obviously uh, something right about it. So I, while parents disagree with it, and sometimes I disagree with it, it, as soon as you leave that player in and they end up getting three and four real quick, then you look like a moron as a coach for not pulling them out of the game. So you, you can't win it either way. So uh, It's probably, probably and, safe, play it safe and pull her out. And even if the player does try to avoid foul, are they still playing the basketball game that you want them to play, or are they just trying to avoid contact? So. Mm-hmm. Bishke with the one and one, no good. Rebound, in, or excuse me, <laughs> Hornets, and it'll be a jump ball. Possession will go back to the Hornets. 25-16, nine-point lead for the Indians, their biggest of the night. 25.7 seconds here to go in the first half. We'll have a little halftime entertainment for you here. I believe the Winter Guard is performing at halftime of the girls' game. The ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, the Indians are on a 12-0 run. Uh, Harvard took the 16-13 lead. That's right. 16-13 lead, so a 12-0 run. I think I said that right before. They needed a 10 or 12-point run, yeah. and, we, and we got it. And that's going to be a technical foul on the coach, and the coach is not being quiet. So the player, what, gets two shots in the ball? Two shots in the ball out. Billy will take the free throws. Coach was arguing over the fact that it went out of the back of the player on the sideline down there. And now, according to IHSA rules, the coach has to sit on the bench for the rest of the game and mm. not stand. And that's something that actually I have not seen enforced as much up in northern Illinois as, I, as I've seen it in central Illinois. In fact, uh, over in the Quad Cities, Coach Pettit uh, got a technical, probably not a deserving technical either. But uh, And he was told to sit on the bench, and he had no clue that that was a rule. And I really kind of have forgot about it because it's not enforced a whole lot up here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Coach Husky, Laley. Nice pass from Billy and Husky connects. Coach Laley might as well bring a lazy boy out and coach yeah, second half. Exactly. Now he can get up to call timeouts. That shot is no good here at the end of the half. 28-16 Indians. So that caps a 15-0 run here to end the half, and they go in with a 12-point lead. So Harvard able to hang around for a little bit. Indians with a nice little run there to extend it out, 28-16. It's halftime here at Homer Berry Gymnasium where we are in the middle of the Castle Challenge. Second portion of that, and we're going to have, I believe, the Winter Guard perform. Yes, we are. Winter Guard will come out and perform now. We'll turn it up so you can hear the music, enjoy the performance. We'll be back here in the second half in about 10 minutes. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was the Marengo High School Winter Guard. Tonight's a big night here. Tonight's a big night here at Marengo High School. Castle Challenge, both uh, the Harvard Booster Club and the Marengo Booster Club, they kind of come together. They kind of come together here to uh, raise money during the football season. The Harvard Marengo football game alternates from each school every year, and the, the hosting school has a pork chop dinner and a, uh, all the festivities, all the fall teams are recognized. Kind of a nice little kickoff to the school year uh, there when Marengo plays Harvard. And uh, the proceeds from that game, no matter where it's held, are split 50-50, uh, and the, the checks go to each booster club. And so it's a nice little fundraiser, and after all the money's tallied together, then the alternate school who didn't host it during the football season then hosts the basketball game where the checks are presented and the sponsors are thanked again for all their hard work. And um, it's kind of a nice little uh, uh, extra to add on to all the things that um, the booster clubs do for us. And it's a nice little money raiser. I believe that every year the, the totals have gone up every year, so... It's a nice little uh, kind of buffer for a bumper for the uh, the sports programs. Oh, it's great to get the rivalry going too with Harvard and Marengo, and yeah. And uh, Nate, I actually got a I got a bigger question to ask you. I wasn't in school today. But uh, today's the last last day of BBFFA week, and uh, what class won the uh, spirit stick? I believe the no, the seniors won it by one point. No kidding. Who was in second? Uh, sophomores. Sophomores or freshmen? I can't remember. Wow. Yeah. I think we're having some sound problems here, Dwayne. No, oh, really. Go ahead and try it again. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I think we're all right. You know, uh, well, uh, you told me earlier that Shelly Kaminga won the uh, staff uh, uh, award for, for Spirit. Yeah, it's kind of a nice little add-on. They've done a, 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 a Spirit, kind of a Spirit trophy for staff, and, and the staff get to participate in all this stuff. And, and I was the victorious person last year for BBFFA, but I was um, not on top of my game this year and totally forgot about it on Tuesday, which immediately puts you out of the running. You got to be winning from day one. Yeah, right? you know McCaffrey. He was uh, he, he he was always up there. He's always in the school. Spirit. He was the Pretty fall cool the that. fall winner, I believe, for the teachers. Dave McCaffrey. Yeah, BBFFA week's always a lot of fun, a lot of spirit, it's and good. it's nice that it coincides this year with the Castle Challenge game here. So they got the bleachers down at the uh, the far end. You'll notice as the camera turns towards the left, you'll see the. Uh, the metal bleachers and the big American flag and the big American flag. And down there in those bleachers, they're going to bring in the, um, all the, there's 150 some third through eighth graders that are coming to little Indians basketball on, um, Wednesday and Saturdays. And they're getting the opportunity to, uh, come in, uh, play a little basketball. And tonight they get a free spot down there at the end. They get to cheer on, the teams and hopefully distract the uh, Hornets there in the second half of the varsity basketball game, boys game. And then uh, I believe that the little Indian wrestlers, the wrestling program, they're going to be here tonight uh, for the wrestling match that's in between the girls and the boys game. So it's a little, kind of includes a little bit of everybody and it's a nice little uh, finish off here to the BBFFA week, basketball fun for all. And uh, then there's a dance tonight after the game. So a uh, little bit, a little bit for everybody, and a good opportunity for all the programs to get their night for exposure out here. Uh, Nate, just to go over a halftime sticks that's showing up on the board up there. Uh, Jesse Billy has uh, 15 points. She doubles that up. She's got a 30-point night, and along she's got to have 10 boards, if not more than that already. So, Indians with a 28-16 lead here. At halftime, about 30 seconds to go here in the half, and we're going to get rolling again. 
after this ball game, the wrestlers are starting to roll in here, basketball players rolling in. When this ball game's over, we'll bring the wrestling mats out, put them center, and there'll be one match going on at a time right out center court for everybody to watch. And uh, that's when I, I got to guess that the crowd's going to start rolling in because uh, Harvard brings a pretty good wrestling crowd. And then hopefully everybody sticks around for the boys' varsity game. And it might be a loud night in here tonight. Yeah, their wrestling program is one of the best in the state. Always has been. Indians with the ball here to start the second half. A little handoff and an immediate travel there by Husky. Nice defense, almost a little double team by Hernandez there. And Harvard will take over. So Harvard needs to string together some points here to get back in this ball game. Indians could put them away here with a good start to this third quarter. Yeah, what do you think the Indians need to do here second half just to maintain their lead? And, and I think the, the, the biggest thing, a double dribble there, I think the biggest thing is going to be finishing the shots that they get inside. I think sometimes they get in too much of a hurry, and if they slow themselves down a little bit as they're around that hoop, finish off those shots inside. I mean, there's a lot of uh, opportunities they had in the first half, and this game could have been a lot worse than it was. Double dribble there by Villy, looking to make the pass. And then she picked it up, realized she needed one more dribble to get where she wanted to go, and then she was caught. Now, on the flip side, what do you think Harvard's going to try to do to, to make up this 12-point difference? I think one of the things is, is Harvard needs to put the same kind of pressure on the Indians that the Indians have done to them. Wow, three, three, three straight possessions and three st straight uh, miscues by the ball handlers. So a travel, or a double dribble, a double dribble, and now a travel there. So Indians will take back over. Still up 12. No points scored yet here in the second half. Now, I think if Harvard gets an opportunity to uh, keep that pressure on the Indians and find the big uh, centers inside, they've got two girls that are bigger than anybody that Marengo has. If they can find those two, get some easy buckets, get back in the ballgame, then you never know what's going to happen. Pass off the foot of an Indian, goes out of bounds. Harvard's ball, so four possessions, now four turnovers. A little zone pressure by the Indians. Now a trap up top, Villy and Husky, two biggest Indians with a trap. Shot by Linhart, no good. Marsh, nice pass straight back to, or that was to Husky. Husky back to Marsh, a nice little give and go and uh, Marsh unable to finish it off. So the first real shot attempt there, stolen by Marsh. Marsh picks it up, and she stepped out of bounds. Yeah, I commented about this earlier, but the passing by the Indians is just unbelievable tonight. They're, they're fine, the open person, and, uh, you know, like I said, we haven't finished, but some great looks. That's all you can ask for, get the open shots. They go down, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Some more man pressure there. That's McLeod on the right wing. Dribbles baseline. Looking to get it back out. Now she does to Blazer. Blazer finds Bishke on the right elbow. Bishke up good. So now it's a 10-point lead for the Indians. Marsh walks it up the floor. You're probably going to see a lot of that in the second half if Harvard's not going to put any pressure. Carlson in the corner. Probably had an open shot, but she finds Marsh. Marsh on the cut. Marsh unable to finish the layup and then gets a, I believe, called for a push there on the rebound. Harvard ball. I, I think Taylor had a shot there in the corner. She didn't take it. Yeah. I got her in class, and that's all I tell her to do is shoot. <laughs> you can't score if you don't shoot the ball. That's right. A little back and forth. See, now this is what you're probably going to see a lot out of the second half of the Indians. You know, that zone, zone pressure is a real clock waster. And they get a turnover to Husky in the corner. Husky up and no good. Good look. Good look. Good shot. Just unable to connect. Harvard takes over. And that's another travel. That's probably her fourth or fifth travel tonight. Just unable to get those feet stopped. She wants to pick up that ball to make that first pass. And yeah, the second half so far has been a turnover fest. Indians still scoreless. Indians still scoreless. And you're right, it is a turnover fest. Indians still scoreless here in the second half. Right wing to Vitava. Husky, one dribble, picks it up. Carlson out the top of the key. Vitava wide open. Layup, no good. Rebound Vitava. And they're going to take the ball out of bounds. Foul on Harvard 
on the rebound, Indians ball. That's a, that's what I'm saying. If, they, if Indians finish those layups, I mean, this is they've probably, I would say, missed six uh, six real close shots. Put those in, and it's all of a sudden a, oh. a, a 12 point, 22 point game. Shot there, wanted to fall out, but found its way back in the hole for Villy there. And Villy gets the turnover, and then she steps over. That's going to be over and back. She gained possession on this side and then stepped over. You know, that's another rule that's co- commonly misinterpret- misinterpreted misinterpreted, misinterpreted uh, by fans and coaches. You know, you have to have all three over before you can put one back for the over and back. So if the ball never gets over, it's never dribbled on that side, or if, if both feet never get over, you can't call over and back. What they call there? Jump ball? Uh, I believe there was a foul, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it was a foul there on uh, Bish. So Marsh brings it up. She's got to drive down the middle of the lane, kind of stolen there by Blazer, out of bounds, and they're going to give the ball to the Hornets. They must have thought that Taylor was the one that was touching it when it went out of bounds. We're going to have a timeout here. Looks like timeout Marengo. Coach Rohde with the timeout. What do you think his uh, what what do you, what do you think he's saying here? Just settle uh, down. Probably settling them down. I mean, you've got a 12 point lead here against a team who, you know, is is struggling to get the ball up the floor, which means your press is going to waste some time if not get turnovers. You've got a, the, their defense is not pressuring you at full court, so you could walk the ball up and waste 10 seconds on the way up the floor anyway. So I, I think it's a matter of calm down, find your shots. And then finish when you get the opportunity. I mean, there's there's six points they've left on the floor already and missed layups this half. Bish running point for the Hornets. Out to Linhart. Linhart with a deep three, short. And that's going to go out of bounds. She stepped out of bounds before she saved it. And it'll be Indian ball. And here comes the pressure from the Hornets in the half court. And Marsh throws it out. Billy was open underneath, but Marsh just unable to connect. Pressure by the Indians, and Bish travels. So Indian ball under the hole here. Some sloppy basketball here to start the second half. Billy underneath, nice little pass. To Williams, Williams baseline jumper, good. Good shot. Stolen by the Indians, Marsh with the steal. Drives middle, kicks it baseline. Villy, Villy up and rolls in. Shooters touch there, gonna be a timeout for the Hornets, 30 second timeout. And so just as I said, sloppy basketball, the Indians get two quick turnovers, two quick buckets, 34-18, 16 point lead. And I believe that's the biggest of the game. So you, you mentioned a shooter's role, so there is such a thing, huh? Well, I would, I would say that a shooter gets a, a, a better look and has better touch, a, a pure shooter. And so a lot more of their shots that hit rim are going to have a better chance of going in. Mm. Weston Shepard, whenever I play him in pig, he, I always say I get a shooter's role. He laughs at me when I tell him. Well, I, th- I agree with it. What I don't agree with is the hot hand in basketball. Being a stats guy, it's just I don't believe that anybody is going to make more than they're truly capable of making. Law of averages then, huh? Huh? Law of averages? Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. (laughs) I don't believe that, hey, if I'm a 60% free throw shooter and I've missed four in a row, that I'm bound to make the next six. That's not the case. I think every shot you have a 60% chance of making it. It's like on the roulette wheel when they show you the previous numbers. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all, it's all just to get you to spend that money. <laughs> Not that I won't bet on some of those numbers if I'm playing. <laughs> Indians with a little 2-2-1 two, two, zone pressure here. Villy's sneaking up from behind. Now there comes the trap to the middle to Bishk. Nice little uh, press breaker there by the Hornets. And they break it, and that is McLeod with the layup. Perfectly executed there by Harvard. Absolutely. Press breaker, nicely done. Whatever the coach drew up, they did it to perfection there. That same play that they threw out of bounds earlier, oh. they connect Villy 
That was Marsh to Villy. Villy, nice little screen on the side, and then just goes to the hole, and Marsh finds her wide open. Then by the time she came down with the ball and went back up, foul bucket good. 36-20 Indians, and Villy on the line with a chance to make it 37-20 in a 17-point lead. And this will be her 20th point if this goes in. 20 points, many rebounds. She's easily got a double-double. And it is short. Mm, probably jinxed her. <laughs> 36 20 here, 3 25 to go in the third quarter. Three pointer, no good by Bishk. Back out to, I think, Williams with the rebound. Kicks to Carlson. Carlson to Marsh, and Marsh brings it up. Shot on the left wing, no good. Rebound. Back to Marsh at the top of the key. Marsh with some pressure, trying to dribble out of it. Finds Carlson on the right wing to Williams with a little jumper and. In and out, no good. See, now that's shooter's touch there. It just happened to go the wrong way yeah. for him. It had plenty of opportunity to go in, but knocked out of bounds on the rebound by the Hornets, Marengo underneath. And a pass is picked off by Bishk. Bishk looking to try to get control up the floor with her left hand. Reach by Marsh, that's gonna be a foul on her. Be a Harvard ball underneath. Crowd's really starting to pick up here. Student section's starting to stroll in here. Do they have a theme for the night? Do you know of? Yeah, I don't know. Garrett, do you know? Is there a theme for the student section tonight? They usually come with some crazy idea. Shot no good by Linhart. Rebound Carlson. Carlson goes up the sideline. Villy with a layup. Good. That's her 21st point of the ball game. Average of 15, she's up in that average tonight. You know, I think it's dressed like an older woman tonight, I think, or older older people tonight, I think. Where'd you get that from? I, I think that's what it said last week in our pep assembly. Oh. But we'll find out when people start rolling in dressed like older people. Some walkers coming in. <laughs> Inside the Bish, Bish with a little jumper, no good. Backside rebound, good box out there by Williams. Yes. But I think she knocked it out of bounds. Her, she was... She had Jacobs boxed out, but unable to come down with a board out of bounds, Harvard ball underneath. Two sixteen to go here in the third quarter. Inbound stolen. Quick foul. Oh foul. That's gonna be Marengo's third foul, thirty eight twenty. Billy with the steal underneath. Out to Carlson. Carlson up the right side. Finds the top of the key. Finds Marsh. Marsh looking inside. Smart decision not to just throw up the three there when you can waste some time off the clock. She drives kind of off a foot, back out, and Hernandez comes up with it but rolls over, travels. Indian ball underneath the hoop. In the game for the Indians is is Velasquez. Velasquez, number 12. Carlson with her three-point attempt blocked by Blazer. Bishke picks up the ball, able to get it back to Hernandez at middle midcourt there, but she loses it. Marsh with her. Marsh has been all over Hernandez tonight. Just Hernandez unable to really do a whole lot with it with Marsh on her. And Marsh loses the ball there, and it's going to be a jump ball, I believe, and possession goes to the Indians. Foul there on Jacobs, Villy, trying to get it back out underneath again. This has been a slow quarter here. Still 135 to go in the quarter. and Figure seven fouls and about 13 or 14 turnovers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That ball out to the wing to Williams. Williams able to knock it down two points, and that takes the lead out to 20 points for the Indians. 40 to 20. And there's going to be a foul on Marsh. After this ball game will be the wrestling 
uh, match between the Indians and the Hornets. We will actually cut away, and uh, if you are watching it online, you'll actually have to re-click on the Hornet uh, Marengo wrestling match in order to view the wrestling. We're going to set it up as three separate events. So if you go back to the main page, if you're watching it online, and you uh, click on the uh, wrestling, you can watch that as a separate event, and then we'll do the same thing again before the boys' uh, varsity game. Um, I read something in the uh, paper this week. Uh, Tim Hack's son is uh, the head coach at uh, Woodstock North Wrestling, and they wrestled each other. I saw that, yep. Yeah. Now, who won, father or son? <laughs> the father. I think the score was somewhere like 60-something to 6. Oh. But, uh, yeah, but that, I guess he's starting to build a program over there. I believe I read that article. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the whole article was stating. And I think he coached under his dad for a while before heading over there to Woodstock North, correct? I believe so. Tim Hack, also the football coach. Now, is he going to – is that his last year this year as a football coach? I don't know. I haven't heard. I thought I heard somebody talking about him getting out of football. I'm probably totally wrong. I might be thinking it's of kind of interesting else. when family members play each other in sports, just like uh, my beloved 49ers yeah, in the Super I know, Bowl. I know, I know. Yeah. Playing – Playing the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, go Niners. So uh, what's your prediction on that one? Well, Niners, of course. I don't care if it's one point or one point or <laughs> As long as they're scores higher points. than the other. Yeah. Indians here with a 22-point lead. Time winding down here in the third quarter. Rebound. Vitava. Vitava back up, and she's fouled on the shot. She'll go to the line and shoot two. 22-point lead for the Indians. Their biggest of the night. 21 point second, seven seconds to go. Here in the third quarter. Yeah, as long as the 49ers don't get beat as bad as my Irish. Yeah, that was an ugly one for you. Yeah. You know, I think uh, it's very interesting. You, you, all the stories that are coming out about the Har Harbaugh brothers. While Jim was a quarterback for the Bears and John was an assistant at Cincinnati, um, they were both helping their dad recruit for Western Kentucky. And helped him recruit and turn his program into a one double a champion and eventually he moved his program to the to the top division and jim as a bears quarterback would spend his off seasons recruiting for his dad as a, a official certified ncaa volunteer coach no kidding yep and and what would happen was john's john would find the recruits that were not good enough to play at Cincinnati, but good enough to play at a one double A program for his dad at, at Kentucky, the ones down in Florida, right around where uh, Jim lived. And so Jim would go to these kids' high schools. And I mean, imagine an NFL starting quarterback coming to recruit you to yeah. go to Western Kentucky. I mean, that's a pretty easy decision. Uh, Ray Lewis, uh, you know, it's his last game that he'll be playing. And uh, do you know who uh, his first sack was against? Was Jim Harbaugh. Was it really? Jim, Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Yeah, no we kidding. played for the Colts, yeah. No yeah. kidding. That's good. And they, uh, Jim Harbaugh and, and Ray Lewis actually turned out to be teammates, I believe. Uh, I can't remember who what team it was with. But they were now, was, now has Ray Lewis played all the, his seasons for the Ravens? No, he. I believe he came out of the U. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Mr. Steve Young's favorite yeah, team, know. yeah. Came out of the U and uh, went to Houston. Oh, okay. Uh, back then it was Houston Oilers. Oilers, right. Yeah. Boy, he's been around for a long time, hasn't he? All right, so we're going to go in the fourth quarter here. Indians up 44-20. to 20. A pretty nice scoring night for the Indians. Here with still one quarter to go. And Indians... with a 24-point lead, will have the possession to start the fourth quarter. So eight minutes to go in this ball game. Indians with a nice lead. Look for them to slow it down. Probably look in the world of layups only. They're not going to do too much to get themselves in uh, too much trouble here. A little baseline drive there for Husky. Gets a layup but unable to convert it. Yeah, I'd imagine. Uh, Linhart with the three. No good. You know, some, Husky. Of the, some of the starters for the Indians will probably be taken out here very yeah, shortly. Yeah, i got to think that that's probably going to happen here. Although, I mean, the Indians only have 10 players or so, so a lot of them have played the game already. A little three-point bucket there. No good. Back out to Brett Schneider. Brett Schneider gives it back to Marsh, and Marsh is going to reset. Smart decision. Billy posting up hard underneath. 
Wide open left side up, no good. Rebound is gonna go out of bounds and last touch by the Indians, Harvard ball. Harvard looking to get something going here. Not able to get anything inside. That's Linhart up top. She's a pretty good three-point shooter. The drives, misses the layup. Pass back out to Bish. Can Bish be able to knock down the 15-footer? 44-22. Right around the corner starts baseball and softball season. What is the official start date for softball? February 25th. February 25th. So yeah. we, are, we are one month away exactly today, aren't we? That we are. I freak you out a little bit there, Coach? No, I'm just a little excited. <laughs> Getting ready to get the year started again. Indians coming off of back-to-back -back state championship appearances. Coach Nance's ball club winning it two years ago and Falling short this last year to a pretty good team from, where were they from? Glenbard South. Glenbard South. Yeah, That's their final ranking uh, in the NFCA was national ranking, which is the only national ranking for high school sports, for high school softball, uh, had them as high as 17. No kidding. Yeah, final ranking. Well, if you got to lose, you lose to the best, I guess. Nobody ever wants to lose, though, especially you. <laughs> Not yeah, at all. That was a travel by Marsh. So how's the team going to be coming back this year, Coach? Uh, we'll be okay. We lost four starters, but we uh, we have six coming back. And um, some of you guys are saying, well, four plus six is equal to ten. We use a DP flex, very similar to the baseball's DH. Right. Um, and you got a pitcher coming back, correct? Yeah, Bethany Hart uh, is going to be a senior. She was 10-0 and last year with a pretty low ERA, um, striking out about one and a half per inning. So I, I think she'll lead us in the circle, and then, um, I, you know, it, it's it's the, it's it's going to come down to the seniors. You know, yep. if they step up and make that change from being juniors to seniors and leading our team, and uh, great great senior class. So I'm really looking forward to That's it. That's good. It's always nice to have a good group of seniors, but it's always sad to have to see them go too. So yeah, a lot of these have been on varsity since either the freshman or sophomore year. So are you going to be pretty senior loaded this year? Yeah, we have six seniors. Okay. Um, and, uh, any any underclassmen, freshmen or sophomores that might look to get any time? Um, last year, the on the roster, the state final roster, we had two freshmen, which are sophomores now: Veronica Rulius and Jessica Turner. We'll turn over there for the Hornets. Forty-four twenty-two, five fourteen to go here in the ball game. In the game, and to bring the ball up for the Indians is Nikki Hammertree. Also in the ball game for the Indians, number 12, Peyton Velasquez, Logan Bretschneider. And Villy still in the ball game. She's currently at 23 points. And you got to think she's probably going to be stepping out at some point here. Baseline bucket, good. Out of bounds on Brett Schneider, knocks it out of Hernandez's hands, out of bounds. And well, I can't believe we're already talking about the postseason, but uh, just pulled up uh, the, the girls are in the Woodstock Regional. Uh, we pulled the fifth seed, so we play Monday, February 11th against Woodstock, the number four seed. With a chance to play who? Who's the one seed? Uh, Woodstock North. Woodstock North. And I believe we played them. Yep. And then, Shot by Bishk is off. No good. Rebound. I believe that was Blazer. No, excuse me. That was McLeod with the rebound put back. Yeah, the Travel. Woodstock Marion took the number two seed. Uh, Richmond Burton, the number three seed. And Genoa, the sixth seed. Those are your six teams. Oh, so there'll be two playing games then. Yes. It'll be a 3 5, and, or a 3 6, and a 4 5. Mm -hmm. I think the boys' varsity. It'll be, uh, the seedings aren't determined yet for a while, but uh, the five teams are Marengo, Harvard, Woodstock, Woodstock North, and Marion. 
and Woodstock North uh, varsity is split with. Uh, Harvard uh, will play tonight for the first time. And Marion, I believe their record is somewhere around five, six wins. And uh, Woodstock's really the probably going to be the number one seed in that. They're around 12, 13, and five, six or so. So they're probably going to end up with a one seed. And then it might be a battle between now and then for who ends up with that number two seed. Woodstock North probably got a pretty good claim at it, uh, along with Marengo. And I don't know, it depends on where the votes land, where Marion and Harvard land. Yeah, sometimes that voting gets a little political. Well, you also got a Woodstock and a Woodstock North who are, you know, in the same conference. You got Harvard and Marengo who are in the same conference. And then you got Marion, who's kind of the loner there. So you kind of see teams want to vote their team, their their group higher to, to give their their ranking a little bit higher so they can be a higher seed. So how does softball work? Same way. Same way. Yeah. I think that's a lot better than the old 16 teams are all ranked together and then you got one playing 16 and then then it turned into you had 16 teams but you didn't always have a one playing a 16 that's you right could have gone anyway and trying to look see where harvard's at contact there in the middle of the floor and I believe they're going to call a foul. Foul on the Hornets, and it's going to be Indian ball. 2.54 left to go here, 48-24. 24-point lead for the Indians. Looking to finish this off. Hammertree going to bring it up the floor. Hernandez is going to pressure. Oh, here Hammertree we go. Uh, Harvard's in the pass. Stillman Valley Regional, and they got the fifth seed, so they play the number four seed, Stillman Valley. There's only five teams in that regional. Rockford Lutheran took the number one spot. Freeport, number two, and Belvedere, number three. Kind of interesting that they went direction, that direction. Yeah, that's a long trip there to Stillman for Harvard. So with two minutes left to go, let's talk a little bit about the uh, varsity boys game tonight, being that you're an assistant coach. What are we going to see? Uh, I got a feeling you're probably going to see a zone defense out of Harvard. Uh, Marengo, uh, we're going to probably come out uh, with a little bit of pressure. Try to try to cut, wreak some havoc to start the ball game, um, and and really I think the if we don't get it inside tonight, um, it's because we're not looking because that, that's the game plan is to get it inside the big guys because I mean their tallest guy is six four and and, and our big guy is six six and and I don't know you know it really comes down to we're just kind of we're we're a bigger team so we better be able to get the ball inside on them and and hopefully that's. Uh, that's the game plan, and hopefully we execute. And I think if we execute our plays and we play good defense, I think that uh, that we give ourselves a great, great opportunity for a win. Who does Harvard? Who's who's their big player? Uh, for Harvard, Fernando Carrera, uh, guard, and Justin Nolan, uh, a guard. The uh, Donnie Nolan, the coach, it's his son, uh. and uh, he's had some brothers go through. Yeah, and, and so, another uh, Nolan. He's, uh, I believe, a junior, maybe, or maybe he's a sophomore this year. Um, I think he played last year as a freshman, but um, he uh, he's there really what makes him go and brings the ball up the floor and uh, pretty good athlete. Steal there by the Indians up the floor and no good. Rebound. Lynn Harden, she'll bring it up the floor. 125 to go here in the game. Yeah, Billy's out of the game. I'm sure she's done for the night. Looks like she's going to end with 23. Pretty nice night. Absolutely. I think you got to give the player of the game to Billy. She's had 23 points and a whole lot of boards there. Williams with a bucket and a nice pass from, I believe that was Hammertree. Pass yeah. Well. Number 15. Be interesting to see the old wrestling actually a bank there for a three for Linhart and makes it four, 50 to 27 23 point lead for the Indians I think wrestling will be interesting tonight yeah you remember three years ago I believe it was when we went up to Harvard it did that you, you referred to it earlier about the match that came down to the to the final two wrestlers and, yeah, it came down to uh, literally the last period of the last match I mean that's something you don't see a whole lot in wrestling no 
just kind of crazy the way everything landed. And, and it was cool because that night also, it started out with the lowest weight class and ended with the, the heavyweight class. So it was like you saw the whole progression all the way up through and then the big guys at the end with the, the match to finish. Yeah, back when I wrestled in high school, that's how it always was. You know, you start with the lowest weight weight class, but then they decide to change that where they do a blind draw on which weight class they start with because of the pressure for the heavyweights. Yeah. And uh, they didn't think it was right that it was always on them. Well, also, too, you know, if you had a team that as you got bigger, got better, you know, I think it gives some teams some adva uh, advantage that, you know, maybe all of a sudden now they get to start with their best wrestler by the luck of the draw. Next thing you know, they got, you know, six points on the board real quick. That was a final horn. Indians win this ball game, 50 to 27. Big night for Villy, 23 points, and uh, a whole lot of rebounds. She had to been in the teens in the rebounds, and Indians come away with a win. They're eighth of the year. Uh, Hornets will drop to four and 18, and um, I think it's just a matter of of the Indians overpowering offensively. They got the ball inside, and defensively, they just put too much pressure on the Hornets. Yeah, you, you know, when the Hornets took the lead at 16-13, uh, ever since then, that was a wake-up call to the Indians, and they just controlled the game. I mean, it was after. a 37-11 yeah. from there on out. And so Indians get a big win tonight. Like I said, we're going to click off of this event. We're going to create a new event for uh, the wrestling match, so stay tuned. It's not up there yet, but if you refresh your browser here in about five minutes, you will see it, and you click on that. And uh, as soon as the wrestling gets set up and, and started, uh, we'll have that event for you here tonight. So event number one of the Castle Challenge is over. Girls, Indian girls win the basketball game 50-27. We'll have wrestling next, followed by boys basketball. Signing off here from Homer Bill Berry Gymnasium. For Dwayne Nance, I'm Nate Wright. We'll see you in a few minutes.